and welcome to another War Thunder Flight Mile Analysis. Today I will be talking about the Nakajima KI-84 Hayate. Now I was super excited for Gaijin to add this plane because I have been anticipating this for a while. I actually love this plane. It is, in my opinion, the best Japanese fighter of the entire war. So it goes without saying that I really wanted this plane to be as good as I've read it was in real life in War Thunder. And this is one of my favorite planes, so... This was obviously one of the first flight model tests that I was going to do when the new patch hit. However, I can't lie, I was a little disappointed when I tested it. And uh, from reading the forums and Reddit and what have you, I can tell a lot of other people are disappointed by this particular plane because a lot of other people had the same high expectations I had for a good Japanese fighter. And they just weren't really met by this plane's current flight model. And now I guess I'll just go ahead and get to the test and show you why exactly I'm disappointed in this flight model. Alright, first up, as always, is the speed test. And what you're looking at here is part of a document from the United States that shows the maximum speeds of the KI-84 at military and emergency power at sea level and at altitude. And you can tell right off the bat that this was pretty fast for a Japanese plane. And I'm going to compare some of these numbers to War Thunder. Alright, so first up, max speed at military power at sea level. You can see from this test that the max speed in War Thunder is 349 miles per hour at sea level. And also at sea level, but at emergency power, its max speed is 361 miles per hour. And here you can see I'm getting 419 miles per hour as the max speed at 23,000 feet at military power. There you can see that the RPM is the correct RPM and it didn't glitch out, which I'll get to more later. And here at 20,000 feet at emergency power, the max speed is 421 miles per hour. And here's just a little chart to easily compare how the KI-84 in War Thunder stacks up with the KI-84 of the real world. And you can see at military power, it is anywhere from 2 to 7 miles per hour too slow. And here's just the same chart, except at uh, military power. And you can see it's again performing anywhere from 2 to this time 6 miles per hour too slow. So the KI-84 is underperforming by a bit in terms of top speed. And onto the climb rate test, the dotted line you see on the right is actually an overloaded fighter. And so the left one is the one we're looking at. And you can see that the KI-84 was a pretty decent climber. And we'll see how that stacks up to the War Thunder KI-84. And as always, instead of just boring you with the climbing itself, I'm just going to skip straight to the results. Alright, as you can see, the climb rate is significantly worse in War Thunder than it was in real life for the KI-84. It takes almost 4 minutes extra to climb to 30,000 feet than it did in real life. And I'd say that's a pretty significant difference. And here's just a little graph I made to help illustrate the point better. Some people might like visuals better than numbers. And during one of the speed tests earlier, I mentioned that there was an RPM glitch with this plane. And here you're about to see it. Alright, as you can see, when I just climbed there, my RPM jumped up a bit. And now I'm going into a little dive and you can see the RPM steadily dropping off pretty steeply actually it almost dropped off a whole thousand RPM and then I go back into a steep climb and the RPM shoots right back up in fact if I was using manual engine controls it would have said I killed the engine due to over revving right there and this made it pretty difficult to perform the top speed tests because I usually perform them by going into a dive all the way to the altitude that I need to be at and then just letting the speed drop off to whatever it naturally gets to. And if my RPM is too low, I don't get the speeds I need. And even though I don't really have much real data on it, I decided to just look into the KI-84's dive capabilities a bit. And you can see the plane redlined at about 502 miles per hour indicated and one thing I noticed after this last mini flight model update for the KI-84 it seems to handle at high speeds much better than it did before the roll rates pretty good the turn rates okay for such high speeds 
The problem with the KI-84 is the turn rate doesn't get much better even at low speeds. Which brings me to my next big point, the maneuverability of the KI-84. As you can see from this military document, the aircraft was found to be quite maneuverable, with a rate of roll and radius of turn slightly inferior to that of the Zeek-52, aka the A6M5. So I'm going to compare the A6M5 and the KI-84's low speed handling. First up the roll rate at 200 miles an hour. You can see I got 3.2 seconds for the KI-84. And for the A6M5 I got 3.4 seconds, so the KI-84 is slightly better in terms of roll rate. And now for the turn rate test. This isn't exactly scientific, but I'm just comparing the two aircraft's turn rate using mouse aim, pulling full on the keyboard and seeing how long it takes to complete a full reversal. 20.1 seconds for the KI-84. Let's see how that compares to the Zero. Pretty much the same exact turn. And I get 13 seconds on the dot. You can see that's not just a slight difference. And now moving on to some stuff that might be more relevant just to full reel battle players. The flight adjustable trim is provided for the elevators only for the KI-84. This means that there is no in-flight rudder or aileron adjustment. And here you can clearly see me in flight and I am trimming my ailerons and my rudder. So it does have in flight trimming for ailerons and rudder in War Thunder, which would not be accurate. Now moving on to the stall characteristics of the plane, it actually starts to dip a wing really early, you don't have to pull very hard, and then it goes into a very slow spin. This is when you exceed your angle of attack. It's a very weird stall, I've never really seen anything else in War Thunder quite like it. And this is the powerless loop. And during this test, you can see I have no trouble keeping the aircraft aloft, even while pulling full elevator with zero throttle. Under 130 miles per hour indicated, the aircraft starts to dip a wing, but you can easily compensate for that. And keep the aircraft flying just fine, until of course you hit the water. And I decided to test the KI-84's acceleration a little bit and you can see me flying the N1K2. This plane has the same engine as the KI-84, but uh, well, about the same wing loading, and the plane is heavier. So I would assume that the planes would accelerate similar. If not, the KI-84 I would assume would beat it. But if you continue to watch, the KI-84 takes nearly double the amount of time the M1K takes to take off a runway. You can see there, 28.1 seconds. And just to give you a little bit of an indication how slow that is, here is a P-47 D-25, fully laden with all the bombs it can possibly carry. It's an overloaded fighter. And it still, believe it or not, takes off quicker than the KI-84 does. See in a few seconds. 27.1 seconds when the aircraft starts to lift off the ground, which is actually faster than the KI-84. And also, another weird quirk I found about the aircraft, don't put your gears up at a low speed whenever you're first taking off. Wait to retract your gears because the aircraft literally starts to fall out of the sky if you retract your gears too early. Yeah, so that just happened. And so overall that's exactly what the KI-84 is, just an awkward plane to fly that's disappointing in most aspects. And if you were looking forward to this before the patch, I wouldn't recommend spending your time grinding for it at the moment. The flight model is really a mess. It's one of the worst I think I've seen since the Hellcat of last patch. 
and uh, I would consider it unflyable in the current state. At least I would not fly this plane at all. So I apologize if you were looking forward to this plane and I just ruined everything. But I hope I'll still see you in my next video anyway.